This is a piece of ammonium perchlorate. It's a compound made by mixing a solution of sodium perchlorate with ammonium chloride. The compound can then be ball milled into spherical shapes like this, and the reason we're talking about it is that it's the primary ingredient in APCP rocket fuel. The same stuff used here, 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 and here. Ammonium perchlorate is a powerful oxidizer, and every oxidizer needs a fuel. This is aluminum. It's not in the solid form you typically see it. It's a powder here, and it acts as a fuel in the solid rocket motor. The average particle size of this powder is only 5 microns, which is 7% the width of an average human hair. Very small. We don't typically think of aluminum as a flammable metal, but in this particle size it absolutely is. And the combustion of aluminum in solid rocket motors is a complicated topic and one we'll discuss later in this video. Solid motors don't start out as all solids. The solids are mixed together with a liquid binder which comes in several parts. This is hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, otherwise known as HTPB. The binder for solid propellant is used as additional fuel and it fills the gaps between the aluminum powder and ammonium perchlorate. HTPB is a viscous substance and on the other end of the viscosity spectrum is the next part of our binder, isodecyl pelorganate or IDP. This thin clear liquid is a plasticizer and it's used to reduce the viscosity of the HTPB, improve the mixability of the solid fuel components and improve the flexibility of the solid propellant once it's hardened. And to harden the mix into the shape desired, we have the last part of our binder. This is a polycarbodiamide modified diphenylmethane diisocyanate. For obvious reasons, it's usually referred to as the much shorter acronym MDI. It's a curative for the HDPB, so once the mixture of oxidizer, fuel, and binder are together, the MDI is added, and over the course of several days, the mixture solidifies. These are the basic components used in most solid rocket motors, both amateur and professional. Each propellant formula has different quantities of these major components, as well as additives like catalysts and burn suppressants, as well as substitutions for plasticizers, curatives, and fuel. Over the last seven months, I have been developing my own solid rocket propellant called Risky Batman. In this video, I want to get everyone up to speed on the various ingredients in a solid rocket fuel and why we pick those ingredients. So before we get into the exact formula for Risky Batman, we have to start with a basic understanding. Those of you who have followed this channel for a while know that my long-term goal right now is to build a space shot, which is a rocket that flies over 100 kilometers. The size of the rocket I'm interested in building means that I can't purchase these rocket motors. I have to build them myself. I began this process one year ago with my first rocket motor called Simplex. It was an O-class rocket motor using cherry limeade propellant, and if you want more details on it, boy oh boy do I have some good news for you. I made seven separate videos covering how that motor was built, and they're linked right here. They're linked right here. There we go. Cherry Limeade was a fine propellant for what I wanted at the time, but it is not suitable for the space shot. So to dig into the why behind this, we first need to get on the same page about the characteristics we can use to evaluate a rocket propellant. Each propellant has a burn rate, a pressure exponent, and a nominal density. In addition, we need to factor in how pourable the propellant is, how mechanically strong it is, and how easy the components of the propellant are to both buy and to work with. So let's start with that last one. In the United States, you can buy a lot of chemicals needed to make solid rocket motors, but some are easier to get than others, and the quality of the components, depending on your source, is gonna vary. Actually, let me correct that and repeat for clarity. You can buy the exact same components from two different sources, mix two identical different batches of propellant down to the tenth of a gram, and your motors will still burn differently, sometimes significantly. The quality of your source material matters. In addition to being able to buy the components you need, you've got to be able to safely work with them. So let me give you an example. A common component in solid rocket motors is a bonding agent, and this is a compound which grips onto the HTPB binder and grips onto the ammonium perchlorate, sucking them together. It strengthens your propellant, especially when using large AP particles, and so two particular bonding agents are HX878 and HX752. They do the same thing, 
but they have very different side effects. HX878, sometimes called tepanol, is a sticky honey-like substance, and when it comes into contact with ammonium perchlorate, it liberates ammonia gas. The gas can get trapped in your mix and rocket motor before it cures and create tons of micro air pockets, which can ruin the motor. It's really not good to have the bubbles. To deal with this, you need to mix for a longer period of time, usually vacuum degassing the ammonia as you go. Generally, it's a good idea to split up a mix like this into two days to allow that process to complete, which is pretty annoying. So on the other hand, we have HX752, which releases almost no ammonia, and you can go right through the mix process without needing to wait. Let's take a look at the safety data sheet to see if there are any downsides. Oh boy! Category 1, corrosive to metal. Category 4, orally toxic. Category 1, eye damage. Category 1, skin corrosion. Category 1, reproductive damage. Category 2, mutagen. Category 1, specific organ toxicity. This is a good time to address that the category scale is out of 5, and category 1 is the worst of them. Let's check back in with the safety data sheet for HX878. And look at that, nice and clean. So when I talk about being able to safely work with a propellant formula, this is what I mean. Building rockets is cool, going to space is great, none of that is more valuable than your physical health. Sacrificing performance or simplicity in the name of keeping toxic chemicals far away is, in my opinion, a trade-off worth making. Also, I don't mean to scare anyone with this little sidebar, but it is fascinating how much this chemical can mess you up, specifically in its mutagenic capacity for gametes, which means how it affects your reproductive system. So as a quick human reproductive lesson, if your body produces sperm and you're interested in having kids, the spermatogenesis cycle, or how fast you generate sperm, takes about 64 days to complete. This means that if you are exposed to HX752 as a mutagen and you want to have kids, you should wait at least two months from any exposure to the chemical to do that. Where it gets significantly more terrifying is that if you have ovaries, you are starting out with all of the gametes or eggs you will ever have. So that means that exposure to HX752 as a mutagen will affect you and your reproductive system for life, and there is no coming back from it. Okay. Not a very fun tangent, uh, but an important one to illustrate a point. Don't work with toxic chemicals, it's not worth it. So apart from being able to purchase the components of a formula and safely work with them, we also need to create a formula that is more pourable than cherry limeade, and one that burns relatively slowly. So the pourability is an obvious choice here. Um, while you can pack rocket motors and you can pack a Q-class motor, packing a Q-class motor is going to be a nightmare, so a propellant that can flow freely into a motor is important. But to address the other part, why do we want it to burn relatively slow? This is a question for another video where we analyze the pros and cons of space shot architectures like single versus multi-stage vehicles, short hard burns versus long slow burns, length to diameter ratios, etc. For now, what you need to know is that for a two-stage architecture like the one that I'm pursuing, the best upper stage burn is long and relatively slow. This is good for overall apogee, it's good for reducing max dynamic pressure, or max Q, and it means it's easier to keep the rocket in one piece. So these are our constraints. The propellant must be made from ingredients I can purchase, the ingredients should be as safe as they can reasonably be, the propellant must be pourable, and I'm looking for a tame burn rate and pressure exponent. This is a theoretical Q-class rocket motor. You're looking at a program called Open Motor, which you might have seen last spring during the Simplex series of videos. This program can simulate how various rocket motors burn given inputs for burn geometries, nozzle shapes, throat sizes, erosion, slag buildup, etc. You can simulate these motors with various propellants, but here's my question, how does the program know how each propellant burns? With solid motors, we can use two numbers to describe this, burn rate and pressure exponent. This is a cross-section of a propellant grain with a core in the middle. The outer surface is inhibited, which means that no burning takes place on that side, but the inner surface is burning. The rate at which that burning surface regresses is called the burn rate. It's typically described in inches per second or millimeters per second. I would tell you that every propellant has a specific burn rate, but I would be lying, and that is because every propellant has infinite burn rates. The burn rate is not a static variable, it changes as a function of the pressure inside of the rocket motor, so higher pressure will lead to a faster burn rate. 
and that's really evident when you burn grains from a rocket motor at atmospheric pressure. When I made Simplex a year ago, I had to chop off a piece of the propellant that was filled with voids. We burned it separately from the rest of the motor. Simplex burned for about 9 seconds or so, up at 400 psi, while the separate grain at atmospheric pressure, same exact propellant, same exact mix, burned for almost a full minute. The relationship between burn rate and motor pressure is exponential, so to describe how this burn rate changes with pressure, we use a number called the pressure exponent. This is an equation called St. Robert's Law, sometimes called VL's Law. Although, just to pause here, I read through some of the old Royal Society documents on these two, and like, while they both had some idea of how things burn, St. Robert was way more on the mark. VL had no understanding that like, pressure had a really big influence on burn rate, so I count it as St. Robert's Law, and I'm sorry, this is all drama from a hundred years ago. Let's move on and make a rocket propellant. The upshot of all of this is that this equation has two parameters we're concerned with modifying, the burn rate coefficient and the pressure exponent. The burn rate coefficient describes how fast in inches or millimeters per second the burning face of the rocket propellant regresses, and the pressure exponent describes how fast the burn rate changes as a function of the chamber pressure. These are both very important numbers, and we're gonna come back to them in a little bit. Generally, there is an easy way and a hard way to develop a new rocket propellant formula. The easy way is to start with an existing propellant and tweak its parameters, and the hard way is to start from scratch. For Risky Batman, we're going the easy way. There are a lot of propellant formulas available online if you know where to look, and one of my favorites is a propellant formula called Reliant Robin, named after this goofy little car from the 70s. Reliant Robin is a propellant developed by a fantastic engineer named Harry Amadeo. Harry has run a litany of tests on this propellant, and because this data is published on his website and YouTube channel, other folks have been able to run experiments with it as well. The propellant is bimodal. Does everyone in the class remember what bimodal means from the Simplex series? No! That's right, that's right. It has two different particle sizes of ammonium perchlorate, 400 micron and... 90 micron. Ammonium perchlorate is such a powerful oxidizer. It's such a great fuel for rockets. This is sugar, by the way. This is a little pick-me-up because I've been talking for a while. Okay. Also, all these are just water with food coloring. I would not put actual chemicals here. <laughs> As a fuel, Reliant Robin uses 12% aluminum. I mentioned earlier that we'd talk about the role of aluminum in a solid rocket motor later in the video, and if you look at the time, it's later in the video now. I have no watch on. Anyway, aluminum can increase the performance of a solid rocket motor, but it's a little bit size dependent. There's some conflicting data on how this works, but as a general rule, in order to fully combust the aluminum in a solid rocket motor, you need about 10 to 20 milliseconds of residence time of burning aluminum in your rocket motor. The residence time of aluminum is how long it resides inside the rocket motor before being shot out of the nozzle. If the aluminum is not fully combusted, two different things can happen. The first is that your motor will lose performance, and this makes sense, right? You're not burning all of the fuel inside your motor, so your C star, or characteristic velocity, drops. C star, by the way, is a measure of how efficient your propellant is burning, independent of nozzle effectiveness. You don't burn all your fuel, you're less efficient. Easy. The second thing that can happen is called slag buildup. Slag is unburned aluminum that melts together, hitting the converging section of the nozzle and stays attached. If enough of the slag latches onto your nozzle around the throat, slag buildup can actually reduce the effective throat diameter, increasing the pressure in your motor. Simplex had quite a lot of slag buildup on the nozzle after firing. You can see it in this video. All of the melted aluminum that didn't burn is just caked onto the converging section of the nozzle. That's gotta be metal. That's the aluminum, isn't it? As a fun side note with unburned aluminum, the slag can build up outside the motor too. In the 29mm throttled solid rocket motors that I built two years ago, you can see slag buildup occurring on the ceramic blockers outside of the nozzle. Moving on with Reliant Robin, we see an ingredient called oxamide here. Oxamide is something called a burn rate suppressant, and it does as the title suggests. It lowers the burn rate of a solid rocket motor. Adding oxamide helps lower thrust and extends the burn time, which is advantageous for me since I'm looking for a slightly lower burn rate on the upper stage of the space shot. Fun side note, if we wanted to increase the propellant burn rate, we could do that too. Instead of using a burn rate suppressant, we'd use something called a catalyst. 
This would speed up the burn rate on the surface and is usually done with an ingredient like ferrocene, catacine, iron oxide, copper chromite, and there are a few others. Next up for Reliant Robin, we have 11.19% HTPB, which we talked about in the beginning. Then there's HX878, which is the much safer bonding agent we discussed. Then we have something called lecithin. Lecithin is a surfactant and it acts as a processing aid to reduce the viscosity of the propellant. This is super good news because as previously mentioned, we're looking for a very pourable propellant. Also, as a fun note, <laughs> it's like a fun side note, I know I joke about eating propellant a lot or eating the fake ammonium perchlorate here, but out of all of these components, this is the one you can actually eat. Lecithin is sold as a supplement. It's supposed to, I think, like help your digestion. I don't know. I'm not eating it now. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Next we have CaO5, which is an antioxidant and is helpful for use in rocket motors that will spend some good time sitting around before being fired. And then to wrap it up, we have that plasticizer from earlier, IDP or isodecal pelorganate, and the MDI curative to harden the mix. Harry doesn't just give us the formula here though, he has also run a ton of tests on the propellant and he's evaluated the burn characteristics, like as we talked about earlier, the burn rate and the pressure exponent. You'll often see these numbers notated as A and N. A is the burn rate coefficient and N is the pressure exponent. C star is also provided here, which to recap is a measurement of the efficiency of the prop, sometimes called characteristic velocity. In this case, it's 5,072 feet per second, and this represents the theoretical C star. In the next video, we'll make a few motors and fire them, then see how our theoretical C star measures up with our measured C star. Chamber temperature, specific heat ratio, and molecular weight are all important too, but those values are probably a topic for another time. Reliant Robin is a great propellant to start with, and it fits right into my design philosophy outside of solid rocket motors. So when you see me design electronics or flight computers, I'm never designing around brand new cutting edge components. I only use sensors and components that I know other people have used and had success with, and that are well established. My goal is never to push technical limits, it's to build something that doesn't require tons of development so that I can spend more time moving on to the next project quickly. And Reliant Robin is that propellant. It's a popular propellant used among amateur rocketeers, and it's well tested. With that in mind, I do want to make a few tweaks to it, and that's what we're doing in the next video. My hope is to slow down burn rate a bit and increase pourability as well. I'm calling this new propellant Risky Batman as an ode to the propellant that it's heavily based on, Reliant Robin. And in the next video, I will show you the formula and extremely long development campaign I ran to figure out exactly how it burns. I'm working on that video right now, but if you can't wait till it comes out and you just want all the footage and data, every two weeks I make a 10 to 15 minute video on Patreon detailing what I'm working on, and at this point there must be like six dedicated solid propellant development videos. That is all linked below and available right now. And additionally, I'm trying something new. If you are not a patron, um, I'd still love all the data that I put on those updates to get free online eventually. So every two weeks this year, I've started live streaming on the BPS Shorts channel, where I review what I was doing one year ago at that date, and those are a lot of fun. All that stuff is linked below. Anyway, with all of that covered, I would like to thank the sponsor for today's video, Brilliant. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is a hands-on interactive platform built around the idea of learning by doing. Personally, I find this is a much more effective way of learning a new topic, whether it's electronics, algebra, or physics. The fastest, most effective way that I learn is by playing around with the problem in real time, and that is Brilliant's specialty. From all kinds of math, not just algebra, although, <laughs> come on, algebra, but computer science, statistics, gravitational physics, all of these exercises are interactive. You can play around with the problems in real time and I can't emphasize enough how huge that is in comparison with learning from a textbook or a more traditional path. Here's the best part though. When I think of learning something new, it's hard to find the time or justification to sit down for an hour long lesson. My brain just has trouble getting on board with that for whatever reason, which is why it is great that with Brilliant, you can chunk up lessons into as little as 15 minutes a day, which is like, imagine that instead of watching this video a second time, as I'm sure you all do, you could go learn something entirely new right now in the next 15 minutes. If you want to give Brilliant a shot, you can do that for free for the first 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash BPS space or clicking the link in the description. And the first 200 people to do that will additionally get 20% off an annual premium subscription for Brilliant. 
Thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.